Welcome, uh, everyone, to this discussion about the European Cybersecurity Company <laughs> Center. Uh, we have a lot of acronyms uh, in Europe. This is the, la the latest edition. I do need to make sure that I pronounce all the C's in this acronym, so E-C-C-C. Um, we have, I, I think, some key decision makers uh, in, in the making of this, um, let's call it innovation in uh, cybersecurity policy in Europe. Uh, the ECCC is supposed to be the focal point of all research and innovation activities around cybersecurity uh, in the creation of uh, what, what we have decided to call communities. Uh, of, of cybersecurity uh, at European and member state level. Uh, and we're here to discuss exactly what the ECCC is and, and how we get to the bottom of its mission. So I'll start with Cartagena uh, Kasha, who is the uh, deputy chair, so highest ranking uh, official, let's say, from the ECCC here on the panel. Um, and uh, the, the appointment of, of you all, the members, happened just last February, and there's quite a lot of, uh, of actions, in the meantime, preparations to get the ECCC going that, that have happened. So can you explain to us the, the current status of advancement uh, uh, toward the uh, operational version of the ECCC and what your expectations as deputy chair are? Uh, thank you. First of all, I would like to thank for uh, inviting me for this panel. And I would like to say that I'm not the highest ranking representative of the ECCC, the center. Of course, Miguel is as the interim director. Miguel, we can see you, see you also. So good morning. Sorry not to have you in person here. So uh, regarding the question, uh, we're, as you know, the regulation established uh, the center from June 2021. And as in any, this is a new body. Uh, with a legal personality within the family of the cybersecurity uh, bodies. And as in any case of a new established uh, entity, now the um, uh, establishment and initial actions are uh, made by the uh, European Commission. This is the standard procedure for a new bodies that are uh, created. So uh, the process of establishment is a, is a quite complex one, also because the center has a dual role. One, from one, one perspective, it uh, implements the European funds, namely the Digital Europe program from the other horizon uh, Europe. And on the other hand, it has some important tasks uh, for senior regulation uh, to follow. So. Um, now, uh, as for, for the establishment of the center, uh, the structures uh, that are to govern the center are in place, namely the governing board was established. Uh, we have a chair, uh, Pascal from, from Luxembourg, and I have a pleasure to, to be uh, his deputy. And we also have a, a director, executive director, now the interim executive director, uh, and this, uh, this task was uh, entrusted to, to Miguel, who, who is today with us, and the governing board in order to make sure that the, government, that the center works have transferred all the necessary powers to the interim director in order for him to take all the decisions to, to, take, to set, uh, set the, the, the center. So um, also uh, we have adopted the documents necessary, the single programming document uh, for years 2022-24 and we adopted the budget. So, so we, you know, it's a lot of bureaucracy in the, in the beginning, but this is, these are the essential uh, documents that we have to adopt. Also, uh, when you think, uh, when you look at the regulation, there are some. We established the whole framework for cooperation on the cybersecurity, namely the national coordination centers, the network, and the community uh, responsible for uh, um, for cybersecurity. And in order to put this whole framework in place, we also need some more documents uh, to have. Uh, namely, we have started working within the uh, governing board to make to streamline this works and make things happen faster. We started working on the guidelines for assessment and registering of the members of the community to make sure that the community is established as soon as possible. And we also start working on the crucial uh, document, uh, so-called agenda, which sets up the strategic priorities for the center. In general, what, what the center should do. And this work is currently being done by the uh, work streams, uh, work groups within the governing uh, board, which uh, 
from Poland, we have a pleasure also to co chair together with, with Luxembourg. So, from the beginning, this is what, uh, what I could say now. Thanks a lot, Kasia. Uh, uh, in running order, I'll go straight to Miguel, who's joining us remotely from Brussels. Hi, hi Miguel, good to see you. Uh, and, and Kasia mentioned uh, clearly all the, the paperwork, let's say, that's currently in the making. Uh, toward the the operational face of the ECCC, uh, and, and right now, clearly, the commission she mentioned as well is is will be playing a key role throughout the lifetime of the ECCC, but particularly now in the uh, founding phase, if you will, and, and clearly you as as uh, interim executive director. Um, maybe can you explain to us how the commission looks at the role of the ECCC in the broader context of the various activities and initiatives that the commission has put in place around cybersecurity at European level? Thanks, uh, thanks, uh, Alberto, and uh, uh, good afternoon, colleagues in the panel. Uh, and all those uh, participating um, in the audience. And, and thanks a lot to the organizers uh, for having invited uh, me. I regret I cannot be there, but I'm nevertheless happy that I can join in remotely. So um, um, there's been quite a lot, uh, quite, qu quite a production when it comes to uh, European policy on cybersecurity over the last uh, four or five years or so. This was very much triggered by, uh, by the big, uh, uh, impactful ad attacks that took place back in 2017. No petty, I'm going to cry. Where they, there was a <clears throat> there was a realization that cyber was something very very serious, and um, uh, and uh, from that on, there was a series of uh, actions uh, at European level that followed, and um, the idea of the competence center and network was also generated uh, in that uh, context. So you asked me the question to get to the question: How does this fit? in the overall context of uh, EU cybersecurity policy. I would say that the European Cybersecurity Competition Network, uh, Center and Network, sorry, it's about uh, um, excellent in research and industrial capacity building. Uh, to, so what does it mean? It is the, I would say, the investment side of uh, cybersecurity uh, 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 priorities, in my understanding. Investment meaning identifying the priorities, where the funds, have to go, the public funds in this case, and uh, to bundle as much as possible to put forces together from, from the EU side, from member states, and then from those that will participate in the proposals, and then to manage those, uh, those actions. Um, and uh, the idea of creating this body, which is not a new idea, you would note that in other areas of uh, strategic interest in terms of technology in the EU, you also have dedicated bodies. Uh, high performance computing, microelectronics. I mean, this is not the first time that. So the idea is to have this, this uh, to concentrate uh, this, um, uh, this activity under the same umbrella. Actually, activities existed before in terms of research. Research on cybersecurity has been going on for years at European level. We had the previous program, the uh, CEF, Connecting your facility, which already supported support to CSERTs, etc. So for capacity building, so that existed already. But now the idea is to to take it a, a step uh, further, and um, uh, to really uh, to really uh, you know give it a boost uh, in, in this in cybersecurity market in Europe and, and these capacities. So uh, next to what I said before about the investment identifying the priorities, focusing them, you know, coupling the different sources of investment. There's been an attempt here to uh, overcome uh, fragmentation by, uh, you know, putting under the same umbrella. And then the NCC's network is something very important in the whole construction to have this network. Um, this is, it would be fundamental for this to, uh, to, to the overall construction to work, the, 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 the um, extent to which the NCC's national coalition centers will be able to really relate and stimulate and uh, the community at local level. Something the commission, uh, if we would have stayed with the previous mo model, let's say the European level, let's not just say the commission, the institutions at European level, the council, the commission, the uh, parliament cannot do. So really you have to uh, go next to, uh, to, 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 to the ground. So I would say it's about uh, capacity building and uh, research excellence, uh, investment uh, priorities and uh, management and, uh, and networking. This is how in my view, this proposal complements the rest of the picture, NIST directive, uh, certification, 
uh, Cyber Resilience Act very soon, and so on, and so on. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Miguel. Um, so, Dan, I mean, having also having uh, heard uh, Miguel's explanation from a European perspective, um, from a Romanian perspective, uh, and also sitting on, on, on the governing board yourself, um, how do you see the, the dynamic that the ECCC will create in terms of creating more coherence and resilience overall for cybersecurity in, in, in Europe? And, and clearly, for, from a purely Romanian perspective, what are your expectations? What is your strategic goal now that you have clearly secured the center and it's going to get operational in Bucharest? Thank you. Thank you so much for, uh, uh, for the question, Alberto. Um, the center definitely needs to make an impact in Europe, at the level of European Union. Uh, the center got to be successful. That's, I think, a, a consensus. And um, there is a lot of hard work done in this direction. Uh, Miguel and his team, uh, they work very, very hard to, to move things forward. Uh, the board, it's also very active and um, it's putting a lot of effort in multiple directions to, um, to figure out and to, let's say, address key priorities, to, um, to push the strategic agenda, to make more clear and more transparent how the center um, should uh, think, shall operate, shall interact. But let's not forget, uh, in order to uh, achieve this impact and this success, um, it's a lot of responsibility on the shoulders of the member states through their uh, national coordination centers. And um, I, I take the chance because there are so many uh, cyber ambassadors and representatives of the NCCs uh, here in the room and online to remind them that they need to take action at the level of the member state to really, really push on the governmental decision makers and on their own teams in order to be more active to match the effort of the center itself, of the commission, of the board, if possible, one-to-one -one in terms of, uh, let's say, uh, time, hours spent, days spent, months spent, or why not, in terms of euro, uh, in terms of uh, matching the um, uh, digital Europe, horizon Europe effort that the center will, will, uh, will manage with equal investments, why not, on the, on the side of the, of the member states. Um, of course, there is a lot of interest and a lot of effort coming from the academia, coming from the startups, coming from the large or small companies involved in the ecosystem. Uh, organizations that are part of this uh, community that we really, really want to, and we absolutely need to build, uh, if we want to position European Union as a key player in the domain of uh, cybersecurity. And um, from this perspective, I would say um, it's, we have the sense, the sentiment that we need to move a bit faster. Uh, all those efforts that we, we have done collectively, um, they are fantastic, but probably we need to still fine tune, still accelerate a bit, um, especially because the expectations are very high um, from, from, from all the actors, honestly. And uh, as I said, we have no, absolutely no alternative but being successful. If we want to, uh, to have our ecosystem, cybersecurity ecosystem, to thrive, to, uh, to be um, highly uh, sustainable, highly lucrative, why not to say it? Uh, because at the end of the day, um, it's about a huge investment that European Union is making in this, in this domain. And uh, honestly, it, was it is unprecedented in terms of size, in terms of collective effort. Uh, however, my, uh, my big concern I have, uh, it's, it may be that the, the experience, the life, the next years will show that probably this investment is not ambitious enough. We may figure out in the coming uh, months, in the coming years, that we may do even more. Although it looks a lot right now, uh, uh, it may be really, really the case that we have to do a lot more in order to to, to achieve those objectives that we set for ourselves in, in the cybersecurity space. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Dan. Um, and finally, Bertrand, uh, I mean, you, you come from a small but very influential, well-prepared uh, member state, and clearly there's going to be all sorts of dynamics in the new ecosystem that will run and work within the CCC. Uh, you'll have north-south, east-west, and particularly now, 
I think given the geopolitical situation, what you, what do you think will be the, the dynamic in terms of sharing competences and working together between Western and, and Eastern member states in the CCC? Well, thanks for the, the question. So, um, actually, I would I would not see uh, an opposition or a, a rift between Western and Eastern countries uh, on this specific domain of cybersecurity. I think it's a very interesting one compared with other more traditional domains like industrial domain or defense domain. Uh, I would rather see uh, member state level capabilities. Uh, we we have very different models of development of cyber security capabilities inside uh, various member states. Um, and it doesn't depend uh, on the fact that they are on the eastern side uh, or the western side. Um, and so some of the countries uh, on both sides seem to be more advanced. And what is very interesting in your, in your question is the second point, it's working together. Uh, and I think that it's uh, one of the, the, the key accomplishments of the regulation is to uh, put uh, in front the network of uh, national centers as well as the European centers. So you have really two pillars. And from Luxembourg perspective, we are extremely interested in the network of national centers uh, because for us, that's going to be a way to accelerate the maturation of the various ecosystems uh, for the different countries. Uh, we have to share lessons. Uh, some of them are going to be, I would say, successes, so it's easy to share. Some are going to be uh, less easy to share, but we have to do that because that will help uh, countries who are like missing some of the capabilities uh, to develop them. Um, so the work uh, at network level is extremely important. And I would say it's uh, something we, that's dear to Luxembourg because given our size, um, we cannot do everything and our market is very small. So if we want to develop uh, companies inside Luxembourg, we always have to think also European level. And that's something that uh, the, the ministry has always pushed for our agency, uh, which is think at national level and try to find cross-border uh, opportunities uh, or think at least at, uh, at European levels. And, and uh, uh, the, the network of centers is now formalizing this way of thinking because each member state has to develop its own capacities as described by Dan, but it has also to think uh, how to contribute to the network and then to constantly think of the European level. Uh, and the last point uh, will be that it's it's a very also uh, very strong um, f for the European uh, construction in itself because in such a model, small countries have also something to say uh, at the same with the same uh, I would say value as uh, big countries and uh, countries such as Luxembourg uh, can uh, give a, a lot of examples on how uh, to develop these cooperations and to bring value even if you are extremely small in a, in a consortium. Thanks a lot, Bertrand. Um, uh, so I'll go back to Kasia because we, we've heard already quite a lot of input on, on effectively the, let's say, um, short-term challenges of, of getting the thing up and running. And you were very generous in explaining you know, how, how procedurally we get there. Um, would you agree more or less with, we've heard a lot uh, about the importance of the network, the national centers. Are these like the, the key things that keep you up at night about the ECCG, or do you see other challenges as well that you think would need to be tackled first? Um, thank you. Well, unfortunately, what keeps me at night now is the bureaucracy, because in order for us to make the center start running, we have to write a lot of papers. So, for example, these guidelines, they are essential uh, to start the community. If we don't have the guidelines for the NCCs, they cannot open the, well, not, maybe not cannot, but it would be difficult to open the goals for the community and then assess uh, in, in order to have the same, let's say, level of assessment and the same rules of, of assessment to align a little bit. So uh, we have to, first of all, focus on the bureaucracy to have it done as quickly as possible and that, that's why we are working very hard as Dan have said and there are many committed colleagues uh, helping us within the governing board to uh, make it happen and we have very ambitious agendas uh, to, to set these documents. 
And of course, uh, and this is all done uh, because we want to have the community running as soon as possible. Uh, because uh, I totally agree with uh, what Bertrand and Dan have said, that this is the, the core added value of, of the center, that we created a framework uh, when, uh, where we will have national uh, coordination centers that could cooperate and the center should make the cooperation easier, should, should strive this cooperation. But we also made a framework for the community, for the entities to, to, to become the part of, of, of uh, bigger family of the community within the center and of course a lot of has been already done so we also have to do this exercise to map what was already done not to duplicate the efforts uh, to see what can we reuse see what we can uh, maybe adjust uh, to to our needs so this is also something that uh, that has to uh, be done so uh, yeah and then the, the document on the of the agenda with the priorities thanks a lot kasha um, Miguel, um, uh, clearly uh, the, the the funds that will be administered by the ECCC are, uh, you know, ultimately the 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 uh, defining uh, factor in 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 creating possibilities around the uh, projects and in in the the community. And there's both the Digital Europe program and the Horizon Europe program, which will uh, sit uh, within the ECCC. Uh, and clearly, we're, we're expecting uh, those, those uh, uh, programs to come to fruition relatively soon. So can you describe what the commission is planning um, in, in the short to medium term uh, with those funds and how the ECCG will be working with them? Thanks. Um, not the ECCG, the, uh, the ECCC. Yeah. I am sorry, I, I, I said there's too many acronyms. Uh, <laughs> because we have uh, one acronym for confused. that other thing too. I knew yeah, it was going to happen, We sorry. have another one which is called ECCG, which does certification, no, no, no problem, never mind. Um, uh, well, I would like to stress two things before I say something about the priorities. First of all, it's, it's uh, well, what's behind this, um, this proposal? I mean, because the idea there is to, uh, you know, to, to go to a different way of, of doing things. And uh, Katarzyna has mentioned that in her first uh, reply, which is that uh, the government board is now uh, preparing the so-called strategic agenda. What are the priorities for the center, in particular for, for investment? Uh, so that's a new approach uh, as compared to what has happened before, where, um, you know, basically the commission prepares the work programs and then goes to the, uh, to the uh, prom committees uh, with members where member states, you know, vote and, and the whole thing is wrapped up and then co the commission implements. So here is the governing board that is collectively uh, deciding of the priorities. Um, of course, the commission has uh, put something on the table together with uh, some projects that we work with, with ENISA and so on. But uh, what is really important for me is that this, ta this is taken up by the governing uh, board and by NCCs. And we go beyond the logic, uh, let's say member state versus commission it's rather, you know, this is a group of people who are discussing what are the priorities uh, for the future in terms of, uh, of cyber investment. And then second, I would like to stress for me, what will be the proof of the pudding, really very important when it comes to the funds, is that there will be alignment between the EU funds and the national funds. Uh, not total alignment, uh, of course not, uh, member states will keep their priorities, but if we're doing this, I would say, it's not just to do the same uh, with just creating a body um, uh, to do what the commission was doing, basically. So for me, it would be really important if we, if this construction manages to stimulate synergies. So that member states, when they contribute uh, with their inputs to the priorities, they are gonna look what is important to them. And they will uh, also, when it will come to it, uh, uh, several groups of member states, they will join forces on particular topics uh, and that will comp those efforts will be complemented with EU funding. So those two things are really important uh, for me. Uh, and that will de determine the success, uh, the, the degree of success of the, um, of a, uh, of a competence center and network. Uh, regarding the very short term, of course, you know, the, we have, we are building on what, on the, the older ways, let's say. We have, uh, of course, the Horizon Europe uh, program that was already uh, for cyber, there was already a call. There will be another one coming up. Uh, in terms of the priorities, you can kind of uh, recognize the 
similar priorities in, in the heading that we had before, like business continuity or in resilience of devices and so on. So you would say they are similar. Why? Because technology evolves, and, and, but the objectives are, remain the same. Uh, but what has changed really is on the side of uh, of beyond research in terms of uh, what has changed is, is really the, the, the industrial take up. Uh, so what is after research with uh, pu with the digital uh, Europe program, which was the first ever program dedicated entirely to digital priorities, cyber being one of them and the others are artificial intelligence, quantum and so on. Um, and uh, and this has this, this has changed. Just because I talk a lot of time, uh, there is a program which is public, uh, there's a call currently open, people can see for themselves, but basically for that one, there are two priorities. One is to support, uh, let's say, legislation, uh, including competence-centered legislation, so to support for the NCCs, the NIS directive, and so on, so to support the, the, the priorities in the legislation. And the other bit uh, that we have now in the current work program by annual work program is about really uh, capacities, building capacities for resilience in terms of SOCs, uh, security operations centers, cyber ranges, support for SMEs and cyber, um, and, uh, and so on. I stop here. Thanks very much. Thanks a lot, Miguel. I, I do hope that I'm not going to mess up uh, the acronyms uh, going forward, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to mention the ECCG at some point again. Uh, so, Dan, you're also on the management board of ANISA. Um, and I wanted to ask you specifically in, in, in that capacity how you see ANISA looking at the ECCG in terms, uh, see, I just did that, ECCC, in terms of its own mission and tasks. How do you think the two will work together? Um, thank you so much for the question. Um, first of all, let's not forget cybersecurity is one of the only domains well, is the only domain actually uh, that has the privilege and the luxury to have two European Union bodies on the same topic. We have uh, ENISA, which is a great agency and uh, an agency that brought a lot of valuable insight to the board, uh, to the um, ECCC uh, members, I mean, the, the, the representatives uh, from the member states, uh, that brings a lot to the community. And um, definitely, ENISA is one of the most valuable sources of knowledge and information and the basis for decision for ECCC in this particular context. Uh, if I can share one of my, uh, my personal views, uh, I would have loved, of course, to have ENISA full member uh, in the board. But, okay, this is the way the regulation is. Um, they are, they are uh, present there. Uh, they bring contribution. And uh, personally, I think we absolutely need to leverage to the maximum on the wealth of expertise that this agency has for the benefit of the board. And in particular, um, in, uh, of course, in uh, setting up the agenda, uh, the strategic agenda and the priorities, in making sure that uh, this strategic agenda reflects properly not only the views of the board and of the, of the center itself uh, and the input of the European Union bodies, but also um, it reflects properly, why not, let's say it, uh, the agendas and the <laughs> national priorities of each individual member states, and why not the specific business agenda and interest, including commercial interest, of every single member of the community, including like organizations that we have here on, uh, in, in the event. So um, let's not forget years and years of experience of ENISA in managing in the interacting with this entire community that is now de facto part of the uh, competence center community this is it's it's an experience it's a knowledge it's an expertise that we absolutely must not miss must not forget must not ignore thank you thanks a lot dan um Bertrand, one of of the uh, other developments that we've seen uh in, in another international organization, which is uh, NATO, in, in, in the past year or so, has been the development, of, if you will, something similar, which is the Diana Accelerator, which will also uh, try to uh, leverage national 
clearly presence in all the NATO countries. Um, so do, do you see uh, some at least philosophical link there? Do you see some uh, um, uh, uh, scope for uh, synergies that could happen at either a national uh, uh, level or within Diana and the ECCC? Um, how do you see the whole link with, with security and defense, if you will, coming from, from NATO, very much in the same space of new technology and cyber that the ECCC is tackling? Well, that's, uh, that's also an interesting question. Um, I mean, in, in the regulation, it's already advised uh, for the ECCC and the network to um, look for synergies with the defense sector. Uh, so looking for synergies mean obviously working with, for instance, the European uh, defense agencies where uh, possible. And it will open uh, wider, uh, going to, to the Diana, for instance. Why not? I think the key issue is uh, to make sure that uh, we don't do duplicates, uh, we don't start uh, to work on their projects, but we look uh, rather of um, finding um, the, the, the proper balance between civilian and military uses. Um, cybersecurity is uh, a domain that that's uh, interesting because you can have both uses, offensive and defenses, uh, defensive uses with the same technology, uh, and, and therefore um, Diana will be interested in one aspect. Uh, the EDA might be also interesting in uh, in this type of aspect. Um, the network and the ECC still has to develop the industry, uh, the resilience uh, of the economy. And so that means that uh, they may look at the, the other side. Uh, now, where I see a very strong synergy is in the fact that there is this du dual use. And so technologies that uh, will be developed by the, the network uh, might become available uh, to, to the rest uh, of the community, the military community. And so what we need to do, and that's going probably to, the, to be part of the work uh, through uh, building the agenda is to identify uh, which of these technologies can be dual use, how they can be dual use, and how uh, this can be uh, provided uh, to the defense sector when required. And so what we need to get from them is actually uh, what are the requirements, what are the needs, um, so that we are aware and when we support uh, projects, we know that these projects can actually being reused uh, on the other side. Then there is the other way around. Some of the capabilities that, that are being developed uh, in the defense sector might be of high interest uh, for, the, for the, the economy and uh, the civil sector. And I'm thinking here, for example, of all what's being built around uh, threat intelligence. Uh, there is a lot of work that's being done uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, and there is not much difference in uh, the way uh, threat intelligence is dealt with on the um, military and civilian side for cyber issues. And the evidence is the success uh, that the MISP platform has, for instance. It was developed uh, by NATO initially. Then uh, we, as Ministry of Economy of Luxembourg, uh, took over uh, supporting its development. And now it's being widely used uh, by uh, the civil, by the economy, the, the, the various stakeholders, in order to share uh, threat intel. So we know that is possible, and that's the type of model we should uh, thrive for. Thanks a lot, Bertrand. We are well into the second half of our panel, so I'm also going to look at the other speakers if they have any reactions to the questions that I that I ask an individual speaker. So if you have something to say about civil and defense. You have a chance to say so something now. Otherwise, I'll move to the next question. Three, two, one. Okay. Um, I think I'll, I'll switch uh, to Miguel now. I'll sort of shuffle the order. Um, uh, and I think one of the uh, longstanding um, uh, debates uh, that I think have been there for, for some time is the link between uh, European research and innovation projects and their link with standardization whether there is um, a, a link there that needs to be uh, leveraged. 
Uh, and clearly, we know that there's there's a lot uh, that in cybersecurity that relies on standards. There's a lot of standardization that will likely continue. Uh, we we're expecting, for example, a Cyber Resilience Act that may be heavily based on, on harmonized standards and or certification, all of which re requires standards. Uh, so what do you think will be the, the, the link between the CCC uh, and particularly the European Standardization Organization, so Sentinel-like and Etsy? Um, how do you envisage that they would be involved in, in the work? Thanks for the question. Well, the center is not going to be uh, <coughs> doing standards as it were, but uh, this, said, um, this aspect of uh, standards and um, certification that's something that uh, is already present uh, in the projects that um, that are supported uh, by the current EU programs. So you can see both in the Horizon Europe cybersecurity uh, part and in the G digital program that there's uh, support for uh, for standardization and, uh, and certification. Um, so uh, beyond the possibility that there could be, uh, as the regulation foresees, uh, cooperation formalized uh, with uh, entities such as uh, the um, European standardization uh, uh, development uh, bodies. Uh, that, that's always possible, but uh, let's say that um, the objective will remain with the future projects that, uh, as byproducts, as it were, from the projects that will be supported uh, by, the, by the center, matched by the center, uh, that they can, um, they can lead to, uh, to developments uh, in the uh, in the standards uh, domain. Now, for the rest, uh, well, to be seen uh, in the same way that um, Enisa has a certain relation with uh, with standardization bodies. Well, that's 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 foreseen in the uh, in the Cybersecurity Act uh, of Enisa. In future, the center um, the center um, uh, can also have those relations. But what I want to stress is that the the projects, the input for the project, and also the output from the projects standards. From, from cybersecurity projects, I mean, of course, be they research or, 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 or deployment. Uh, uh, standards has always uh, been, um, you know, an important consideration that uh, European funded projects are encouraged to uh, contribute to. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Miguel. Um, so, um, Kasha, uh, we know that the ECCC is theoretically supposed to work on, based on consensus. Uh, and I think all, all efforts are geared toward having consensus everywhere. But there could be situations where there is a qualified majority and decisions based on qualified majority. Uh, and clearly voting is also, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, geared toward a specific uh, uh, role for funding uh, can't countries that participate in the project. So that will definitely play a role. But now, uh, looking into the future, if you will, try to read into the future, but what areas can you think of right now that you expect will go into sort of qualified majority uh, decision-making as opposed to consensus? Is that too much to, to ask for in terms of knowing what the future holds? Well, thank you for this. Well, from my perspective, the consensus is not a theory. This is the main way we should take decisions in the center. So uh, I'm very committed to always seek, seek for the consensus. And at this stage, I do not identify any topics where we might not be able to reach consensus. Uh, we have a very fruitful discussions, valuable inputs, and there's a really good spirit within the governing board. Everyone is committed, as it was earlier said, to work as a dancer, to work for the center's success. So. I believe there will be no such issues, and uh, I will work hard uh, together with Pascal to make sure that we'll always work on the basis of, of consensus, as I believe this is the best way how in cybersecurity we should uh, move on in our cyber, in our union family together with the commission also. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, maybe as, that's a good segue to, to, to Dan maybe, and I'm also gonna ask maybe to, to, to elaborate on that because you you signaled that maybe uh, there is this feeling already that we're moving a bit too slowly, so we should be um, working faster. So do, do you see that clearly you, you'll strive to have consensus, but could you see situations where uh, achieving consensus m might still make the process a bit too slow for your taste? And how would you manage uh, those those situations? 
thank you so much. Um, honestly, I, I think the sense of urgency is there for all the member states and for all the board members. So we, we absolutely realize, and our member states, our, uh, our governments realize that we need to get agreements on whatever is the topic, whether it's priority uh, and the strategic agenda, whether it will be uh, financial related aspects, whether it will be particular individual uh, points that uh, will pop up uh, in, in, during the work of the, of the center and of its board. So um, I totally agree with, with Katja. Uh, we, we don't, I don't think there are um, showstoppers. I don't think um, it will be um, particularly sensitive topics that may pop up and where uh, for one particular reason or another, one member state or another may say, uh, showstop, uh, this is not in line with our uh, national interest. I think at this moment, um, the common interest we have is to really, really animate the community, to really give that message that we must move on with uh, financing those research, innovation, awareness uh, initiatives that will go through the center. Um, I think there is clear, I dare to say, consensus that uh, the market demands this, that uh, Europe needs those high-end um, advanced uh, solutions and technologies that the center, with the help of the community, can, can actually deliver in a sustainable manner for the, for the coming years. And um, only, um, the, the, only, the only points that may pop up, and will be a couple of them that will pop up, I think can be smoothened out and solved with this uh, mindset that was already mentioned here. I mean, we need to talk, 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 and really get to a solution and get it fast. And this is the mindset uh, the board members enter into the conversation. This is the mindset we see with uh, the team of Miguel and the commission. And I'm uh, personally very optimistic that uh, we'll not see uh, any showstopper uh, along the way. Thank you, Dan. Um, I'll, I'll uh, ask a question. I'll start with, with Betrom, and maybe um, other panelists also have uh, ideas that they want to share here. But clearly, one of the key goals of this whole apparatus is to involve, as part of the community, uh, the SME community quite broadly uh, and comprehensively. Um, what do you think are you know the, the main uh, problems that we, we need to face in the CCC, and, and how do we make that process easier, uh, and we get the best results for our SME communities in, in the member states there? Bertrand, you can start. You have the right to start. But sure, sure. Thanks. Um, so, so, from a Luxembourg perspective, it's uh, it's pretty important because eighty-five percent of our economy is made of SMEs. So, not obviously all of these SMEs are uh, security SMEs, but there is a cybersecurity need everywhere now that uh, the economy is uh, digitizing very very broadly. Uh, regarding the ecosystem itself of cybersecurity uh, SMEs, uh, we have already some experience and we believe that um, the concept of community is going to um, focus on the most uh, willful of these companies, the ones who want to experiment. And then uh, from these experiments, we can uh, broaden uh, the lesson learns to the rest of the, of the ecosystem. So. Uh, what we will see uh, most likely is first a clear definition of what is the community, how we onboard uh, SMBs. Uh, from there, we will learn what are the main constraints they are facing uh, and we'll try to build uh, solutions. Uh, that's, that's, I think, the key issue. And to be fairly blunt, I think one of the issues they, they face is um, the cost of participating in two uh, formal EU projects. Uh, administrative cost because they are very small and so we have to find solutions. Uh, one of them we are exploring for instance is to see the NCCs as platforms that will provide some tools um, so that this administrative overhead can be as much as possible automated and the SMBs can focus their resources on delivering uh, research and innovation. Thank you, Bethan. Uh, any other reactions on this point about SMEs? Um, yes, Dan? If I may uh, pick up. 
Um, I think, um, in particular with regards to SMEs, um, if the center uh, will succeed to properly engage them, take into account that the SMEs, they don't have enough uh, expertise, they don't uh, have enough resources, they hate uh, the administration and the bureaucratic aspects, because for them it's a burden. I think if the center succeeds to properly engage them, to pass the message everywhere, all levels, uh, to all categories of stakeholders, that cybersecurity is not a cost for European Union, it's an enabler. And um, also, let's not forget, it's also highly lucrative and very profitable kind of industry that we need to invest in. And uh, those SMEs in particular, if they join the effort, if they jump on board, let me put it like that, if they become active members of, con of the community, not only consumers of whatever will, uh, will be produced by the programs and the projects run by the center or facilitated by the center, if they, if they become active members, will be good for them. Um, they will be de facto engaged in some high-end, highly lucrative categories of activities and um, they will be able to further leverage on their innovation capability, on their own intellectual property by simply pooling resources, by simply getting effectively engaged. So I think that will be a, a, a big, big challenge for the center itself and not only for the center, for the board, for the strategic advisory group, for the members as such. So let's not forget, it's not a cost, the <laughs> cyber. It's really an enabler, but we need to really pass this message down to the, the smallest SME, down to the smallest uh, uh, digital innovation hub or cyber innovation hub that will get involved in this. Thanks a lot, and also keeping an eye on Miguel, maybe uh, remotely, if you have any reaction specifically on this point about uh, SME involvement. Otherwise, um, I have, uh, yes, absolutely. No, just, just to go ahead. Uh, I build up on uh, what Dan has said. First of all, we have to get the SMEs to know that th there is a center. Because uh, still this is a new baby in our cybersecurity family. Uh, so, uh, and there's a huge role for the NCCs to spread this news, to, to link, identify all the stakeholders that you have at the national level. But also there's a huge role for the network because then if at the national level one NCC has good ideas how to engage with SMEs, which of course is a priority, then it could share these ideas with other NCCs through the network and would ease, ease uh, the operation in other uh, member states. And having this opportunity, I would also like uh, to advertise that soon uh, a call for executive director for the center will be published. And I encourage all those who might be willing to file the application to see uh, the um, application, so we could have a broad range of candidates to choose from. Thank you. Absolutely, thank you very much. Uh, um, uh, there's, uh, I, I already asked Bertrand maybe um, uh, to, to comment on, on and I, I asked the question specifically about Diana, but the whole civil defense uh, dimension is part of the mission of the ECCC in terms of exploring synergies. And uh, I think Miguel already alluded to it in terms of synergies between the existing um, European funds. Um, but specifically in terms of what those synergies could, could, could look like, I think it would be interesting for our audience to maybe uh, dive a little bit into specifically the European Defense Fund and, and, and where, at least initially at this phase, we think that those synergies might materialize. So uh, this is for now, Bertrand has already answered, but uh, maybe looking at Miguel, if you want to expand maybe on that point of, of how the uh, Digital Europe and Horizon Europe programs uh, will be looking at synergies with the uh, European Defense Fund in, in the long term. Well, what I have to say is that things have uh, changed dramatically over the last months, of course. The geopolitical context is uh, what it is, we all know. And uh, there has been a realization uh, that uh, Europe has to step up uh, its game when it comes to uh, defense. And cyber is part of that. And uh, uh, from the side of the commission, together with member states, things are moving uh, in that regard. Um, so in particular, uh, there's work uh, ongoing into uh, assessing the, um, let's say the uh, investment gaps 
existing in uh, the defense area, uh, the new targets, which will take natural to the question of complementarities and synergies. There's also a cyber defense, cyber security defense uh, strategy uh, work in the pipeline. So uh, with that, I want to say that uh, by the nature of, of, of the international developments, um, there is a reflection that has been accelerated uh, recently at the moment on those, uh, on those synergies. So you mentioned the European Defence Fund, of course, and the existing programmes, but uh, let's see how it goes. We might see other instruments, other ways of doing things uh, in a not so distant future. Thanks a lot, Miguel. That's uh, very, very interesting. Uh, and things indeed are very dynamic. Uh, so, uh, and we'll, I'll maybe repeat the call for, uh, you know, applications for the, uh, for Miguel's replacement for the uh, executive director of the ECCG. Please apply. Uh, you heard Kasia. Uh, but maybe I'm going to go for a final round w f with all our speakers and ask you a um, fairly typical question, if you will. So you look in two years what the ECCG will have achieved, the main KPI that you'd like to see realized, what would that be from where you stand now? I'm going to go with Kasia first. Well, that's a difficult question, uh, but together, it, before, we had a very interesting uh, discussion on the education, and this is a topic very close to my heart, I would say, because we all scare resources. Uh, there are not enough uh, cybersecurity experts. And of course, uh, cybersecurity cyber starts with the human factor. So uh, we have to, uh, let's say, expand cyber hygiene. This is very, very essential. So one, uh, I would see, I would be very pleased if I would see that the center succeed in uh, raising the cyber hygiene, raising the, the skills when it comes to cyber uh, cyber security thanks a lot kasha dan in two years basically i would like to see a lot more european driven technologies and solutions but with the necessary knowledge and capacity to implement and to actually use those solutions so that's something I, I really very much hope uh, that uh, ECCC will um, will really facilitate and uh, will succeed, at least uh, even if some of those technologies and solutions may not be fully mature, fully in the market, fully implemented, but at least we'd like to see them in the making. And uh, a strong, strong signal that European Union is moving on and really wants to position itself as the player in cybersecurity at global level. Thanks a lot, then. Bertrand. I would like to see two things, because it's two years, it goes very fast. Um, I would like to see first a functional center, a functional network with uh, very active cooperation between member states, and in particular, um, actual experiment being started between uh, groups of member states on prioritized issues, which means that we have priorities. Uh, and the second thing I would like to see is uh, actual projects uh, funded by, by, by the center and the member states um, that are also on this prioritized issue and that are uh, moving towards solutions that are market driven and that will provide an actual value on the market. So not just pure, I would say, intellectual challenges, but something that will lead to um, market driven solutions. Thanks a lot, Bertrand. And finally, Miguel, from the Commission's perspective, in two years, how do you see things? Well, of course, I, I, I fully support what, uh, what uh, Katarzyna and Dan have said, but I'm very close to what uh, Bertrand has said. My two KPIs are, have been for a long time, and I expect to see that achieved in two years from now. Well, first, a vibrant network of national coordination centers. I really, that's my soft spot. I really want to see them. Not all of them will be as equally active or what have you, but I really uh, hope a lot from these national coordination centers and they're working together. For me, uh, that's what I would really, really like to see. And then the second KPI, and Bertrand, Bertrand also mentioned it, groups of member states in the governing board uh, working together on, on certain priorities. 
So the joint actions that we call them. And then you were saying before, is there going to be always consensus at uh, the points where there will be not consensus? And then I was a bit smiling. I said, well, when it will come to, to discussions about how to share the cake, it might be that uh, there won't be always consensus, but that's okay. That's okay. Some member states will have uh, some priorities and they will have to find the partners. They will have to find a sufficient critical mass of all the members uh, to, 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 to come with this joint action. So these this, uh, member states coming together, a few of them on particular priorities, and meaning that they will align what they do at national level what they, uh, with the support that they get at EU level, for me, that will be really the ultimate uh, proof of success of uh, the competence center. Let's hope uh, we will see that in two years' time. Thanks a lot for that, Miguel. Very comprehensive. You also answered some questions that you didn't have the chance to uh, reply to directly before. So great, a uh, great summary of the discussion. I think there's a lot of excitement, as, you, as everybody on the panel said. There's a sense of urgency, and clearly, literally, the sense of urgency couldn't be more urgent. Uh, indeed. So I, th I think it's great to see that there's a lot of alignment. And I do hope that if I'm, I will be privileged enough to sit on another panel with all of you in two years and see how well we're doing. Thank you all so much for, for joining and to our audience here and online for watching. Thanks a lot.